Here are five tips to help you edit your photos better. Let's go. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm Mike, Regala Photography. And here we talk about everything photography. Today, we are gonna talk about photo editing and I'm gonna give you five tips to help you improve how you edit your photos, things to look for, things to remember when you're shooting your photos, um, and all things like that. So let's get started. All right, here I'm gonna give you a bonus tip before we even get to tip number one. So here's your bonus tip. If you're going to edit your photos, make sure you are shooting in RAW. Um, most modern cameras nowadays, DSLRs, mirrorless, they all have the option to shoot in RAW or JPEG. Uh, JPEG is if you just want to take whatever the camera gives you. Um, you could do a little bit of editing to them, but you really can't do much. RAW is what you really want. It collects the most data for your editing. And it's kind of like a, a negative from uh, uh, the film days. So remember you used to get your negatives from your photos whenever you went to the store took your photos in, they gave you all your photos, but they also gave you your negatives. Well, this is a raw, a raw photo is basically a negative, okay? Even though it looks like a photo, it's got all the color and stuff like that, it is basically your negative. Um, however, they are usually a much larger size, and that's because they collect so much more data. So what you wanna make sure you do is when you're done editing your raw photo, don't just take it and save it. Make sure you export it as another file format, usually JPEG um, or PNGs you can do too, but usually JPEG if you're gonna share to show, uh, social media or onto a website or something like that. So usually you wanna do JPEG because they're much smaller. Uh, like uh, right here, uh, this raw file from a Canon, Canon EOS R is roughly almost 30 megabytes. And when I save it as a JPEG, um, it will be about five, five megabytes. So I'll really downsize it a lot, um, for, uh, for the web and for social media. Tip number one, color profile. Over here in the develop module under the basic tab, you'll see profile. Usually the first thing up here. Um, if you click on it right here, you see you got a couple other Adobe choices. And these are the factory ones that come right from uh, Adobe that are in Photoshop and Lightroom, okay? What I do those, I click over here and there's a few extra Adobe ones in there as well. You got the same ones that were um, out in that other tab, but then you got a few more. Um, the one I tend to use is Adobe Neutral right there, okay? However, I do wanna show you, <clears throat> excuse me, that you have a few other choices down here. Right below that, you'll have camera matching. So depending on what kind of camera you use, Adobe actually provides profiles that kind of go along with your camera. Um, and uh, I shoot a, a Canon EOS R. So these are all the Canon profiles. And you can see they're not too bad. Um, they're kind of saturated. If you look at the color balance, very, very greenish color. You got a monochrome as well, black and white. There is one right here, which is a linear profile. I actually created this. I'm not gonna go into that right now, but um, it's kind of like a, a completely neutral profile. But usually what I use, I like this Adobe neutral. You can see it kind of desaturated and kind of flattened everything out. So um, color profile, choose a profile that helps you get the best base for your photo, okay? And again, uh, for me, I like to go neutral because then it gives me the most choices and the most dynamic range for uh, editing my photos. But sometimes I may go to landscape or vivid if I think it'll work. Tip number two, use your basic adjustments sparingly. And what I mean by that is whatever you do in this basic tab right here is going to change the whole photo, okay? And you do want to do some, you got to change a little bit. Let's switch that back here, okay? You do need to do a little bit of basic adjustments. 
But what you really want to do, oops, see what I mean too much there. And then I'm going to go highlights down a little bit, bring up the shadows. Why is my pen doing this here? Whites right there, black should come down a little bit there. Okay, texture. I want to do a little bit of texture on that. Clarity, definitely want to do some clarity. Vibrance. Actually, before I do vibrance, I want to come up here and I want to kind of cool off. Bring it back a little bit. Warmth. I don't want any green. So Yeah, kind of like that, okay? And then we do the vibrance. You can see that, maybe a little bit of saturation, okay? And then bring it up like that, but <clears throat> I just did some very basic adjustments, okay? Now this photo's not finished, okay? So now what I wanna do is I wanna come on over and use my masks. Uh, Lightroom had just recently updated and their masks are phenomenal now. They're all, like they're up there with the Photoshop masks. I mean, not quite, but um, you could do a lot with them. Usually what I'll do is like a, sub, uh, a photo like this, I'll start with select subject and you can see it's selected my subject. So now I can really make that deer pop out a little bit. Kind of go back down a little bit with the temperature, get the green out of there by bringing up the tint. Uh, definitely want to increase the clarity and a little bit of texture. Okay. And then now, right down over here, if you look, this uh, fur where it's supposed to be white, it's green. But if I do a complete, a global adjustment or even for the whole subject, it's going to change the whole subject. So what I want to do is I want to put another mask. I'm going to do a radial gradient and I'm going to put that right over here like that. And then now I can come on over and I can start to play with the green or the tint. And I could change the white right there a little bit. And what I'll also do is kind of desaturate it a little bit. So it's more white. And I can see it's more white. It looks much better. Okay. It doesn't have that green tint to it. All right. So do your basic adjustments, but then go back into the, your photo and do some local, they're called local adjustments, your masks. Okay. So you have subject, radial, uh, you have a uh, uh, linear, you have luminance, you have color. Might be a couple I missed of, over there. Uh, let me see. So you got select sky. So in a photo where there's a sky, you would select the sky. You have a brush tool, brush mask, color range, luminance, and then depth range. I have not used the depth range yet. Um, it's usually in like portraits and stuff like that. But Use your basic adjustments sparingly. Tip number four. Now this one is, I don't know, some people call it controversial, I guess, but basically once you're done with your photo and you edit it all and you, and, and you see, even if you saved it, but you didn't export it yet to a JPEG, come back to your photo later with fresh eyes. Sometimes you can even do it overnight. Usually after I get done editing a photo, I won't post it right away. Okay. Usually I'll post it the next morning. That'll give me a little bit of time to kind of like, let me think about it and kind of let it sink in. And then when I look at the photo again, I have fresh eyes. Cause sometimes, you know, you're sitting there, you're editing photos for an hour or whatever. Your eyes are getting messed up and you're getting so used to looking at the screen. When you give it time and let it sink in a little bit, when you go back, you may think, hmm, it might need a little bit of this, or it might need a little bit more color, or maybe I crushed it too much, or I crushed the blacks too much, or I overexposed the whites too much. Um, you know, different things that you can kind of come back to and can you can readjust. So come back to it, put it away for a little bit, come back to it, even in just a couple hours, just come back to it and then export it and send it to your clients or 
post it to social media or whatever. Remember, whenever you, whenever somebody sees your your photos, your work, you want to make sure that they see your best work. Okay, don't let them see subpar work. Only your best work. Okay. All right. Tip number five: Check your white balance. Okay. So many times, like people don't set their white balance in their camera like you should. And then when they come in, they get their, their photos and they're like, oh my God, why is it all yellow? Why is it, why is it all blue or green or whatever? Okay. Try to make sure you set your white balance in your camera properly. It'll save you a lot of headaches later on in post editing. Okay. Um, now you saw me earlier why I kind of readjusted the photos or the, uh, white balance in, um, in uh, this photo. So I pretty much have it, but your white balance here. Now you could use the eyedropper and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, it all depends on this particular case. If I were to hit the eyedropper, bring it over and find something that should have been neutral, click it. Not too bad. I mean, it did make it a little bit cooler, a little bit cooler. I would probably increase it a tiny bit more. Right about there at about 4,700 Kelvin, a little bit over, almost 48 Kelvin. All right. So uh, right there, that would be where I would put uh, my white balance. So check your white balance. Bonus tip. Getting back to what I said earlier about you be sparingly with all your adjustments, okay? Especially when you're working with a sky photo. I can't tell you how many times I see people editing skies and there's pure black in the sky. Even on a stormy day, your sky is not pure black. At nighttime, it's pure black. A summertime sky or even a stormy sky is not pure black. I saw a photo the other day where there was black in the sky. It looked like snow in the springtime when there's dirt on top of the snow. I mean, it looks terrible. I mean, if I bring my highlights all the way down, this is a summertime sky. I mean, I, or fall sky. It's a nice sunny day. I, I'm not even going to see grays like this unless it's a stormy day. Okay. So I need to back that off a little bit and the highlights, but you can see I'm a little overexposed in the highlights. So what I'll do is I'll bring my exposure down a little bit. All right. Don't want to go too much. All right. And then what I can do is I can go over here to the blacks and I can bring the blacks up a little bit. You know, I'm going to do this. Let me do a mask, sky mask real quick so you can see it just in the sky. Okay, there you go. All right, so my exposure, I brought my exposure down a little bit. Now, if you watch over here, this area where the uh, gray is, if I take my blacks and I increase them, you see that it gets a little bit lighter. Now, you do got to be careful again with that because now your whole sky is going to get like that, okay? So another way to do it is with your shadows. You could do that. And then there's a third way you could do it is I can make another mask. I can do a radial like that. And then now I can open up the blacks a little bit. And you can see how they get a little bit better. See a little bit of gray like that. That's fine. There's shadows and clouds. You want that contrast. Okay. But you got to be careful with that because like I said, you can crush them. Same thing with um dehaze i used to use dehaze all the time and i still do but i i, I tell you i hardly use at all a lot at all because again if you go with dehaze you crush it down now you can see those blues they're getting way too crushed i mean that's just that's that's too much on a, on a photo okay same thing with saturation people are too much saturation a little goes a long way okay and again depending on your photo sometimes you may have to go a little bit more than normal but usually you're not going to have to go that much. I'm just again, be careful. Now, matter of fact, I what I did, I forgot with this photo. I did not set this to a neutral color profile. So now when I do this, bring my highlights down, uh, bring the exposure up a little bit, back up a little bit there. Uh, shadows, open up my shadows. The whites, oops, see, you don't want to go too much with the whites because you're going to blow out the sky. Okay. Uh, let me see. Blacks. 
We can bring the blacks down a little bit. Texture, uh, I'm gonna actually go negative texture, but I'm gonna go positive clarity, kind of make everything pop a little bit. Again, dehaze, a little goes a long way. Stature, or uh, vibrance. Okay, usually what I do is I'll do the vibrance first. And right there, that seems to be pretty good. Now, again, these are just basic adjustments. I have not even done my local yet, okay? So what I will do now is that I would come in my local, create a mask, uh, we'll do select sky. So let me see with the sky, maybe I'll bring the exposure down just a little bit. Let's cool it down a little bit there. It was a very, very crisp fall day when I did this. Uh, actually, I did, took these yesterday. Uh, with the sky, let's go negative blacks a little bit. Texture, we want to definitely go negative, kind of make those clouds soft like cotton, but a little bit of clarity, kind of give a little definition to the clouds. And again, dehaze, tiny bit. Look at that, just, just a little bit. Oh, that's even too much right there. That's like a seven, okay? And then now when I come here to the saturation, I can saturate those blue, blues a little bit. What's going on here? All right, something's going on. I can't. There we go. Okay. I've been having problems with my tablet. Let's see what's going on. But there's a little bit of saturation, and I can decrease the sharpness. There. Now, that's a good-looking sky there, right there. Okay, I can close, and then I can finish my edits. All right? So be careful when you are moving those sliders. A little goes a long way. You can always come back and adjust. I hope these tips helped you out and you're going to be able to use them when you are uh, editing your photos in post. Please subscribe, hit that like button, ring the bell, let you know when my next video is up. Until next time, take care.